Yeah, let me get some music playing. Ah, hello, everyone. Oh my god, we can actually look at. I forgot we can yeah, look at. Yeah, you can chat. look at chat. We now. can look at the chat. And that's okay. We can talk yeah. to the chat. Actively talk to the chat. Actively we can chat, chat if we want to. Which, yeah. which will be needed for the QA section whenever we're taking QA that from the chat. Yes. Mine. Can we just talk about how fucking great the art that uh, uh, Kate did is? Oh, Please? yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, I need yeah. to put that in the tweet. Fuck. Ah, oh, god. Damn it, I forget. You forgot you I art no. by tactician. It's okay, now she doesn't have to get tweeted at all the time. True. Yeah. I can at least edit the happen. YouTube post. By tactician Kate. Actually, let me not color that in just yet. Oh, and you have a fan art reel up at the top. I love it. Yeah, I do. Yay! Let's show fan art one Green. last time. Green. <laughs> One more time. Whoa, whoa, I, whoa. I, I'd love to commence the idea of telling the story of how I'm associated with the Uganda Knuckles meme. I, what? It's creation. What? Yeah. what? You guys don't know that? No, I know of the meme. I, I didn't know that there was lore to it outside of Gregzilla. I think I, because I saw the Queen thing. Um, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, I could tell the quick story of that. So, uh, in case you guys don't know, the Uganda Knuckles meme started with Gregzilla, who is an amazing animator and artist. And it started with what is uh, the video of him doing a, uh, a review. Yeah, kind like, of review, kind Sonic of review. Uh, World. Yeah. And I had done the sound effects for that video for some of the animations in it. And that's how I'm associated with the meme. All right, so, well, how dare you uh, perpetuate that? <laughs> I think it's a world-class meme. <laughs> it's a of world, course. It was, such a, it was so huge. I remember my friend uh, Gil dressing up as Uganda Knuckles for... A very worrying statement. Anime, anime Expo. <laughs> All right. Okay. But yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, for Hi. those who are here early, welcome to the post-campaign chat starring the players and DM of Balconist Necrohunt. Starring is a strong word. Oh, you you guys are word. the star, though. <laughs> and I don't know. I always feel like a shining star. No matter who you are. Wherever you are. No! Hey, can well, we pretend no, that... Can that airplanes in the night sky are like <laughs> shooting, shooting stars. stars. Can I leave? No, I love Nicki Minaj. Minaj. <laughs> wish right now. <laughs> I, love Nick, I, I love Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway. Okay. Well, well, well. Welcome, well, well, well. everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to this dumpster fire. Yeah, already. I have no. I have the minimum <laughs> amount of structure for what to do with this. So I guess welcome to our little Q and A. Buccaneers Necro Hunt is over. I apologize that the the episode is a little later. We had a little bit of audio issues, but it has been solved. And Teason is working like a busy, busy bee, like the good editor that he is. And today we get to talk about the campaign. Before we launch Yay. into some of the frequently asked questions, is there anything that you guys wanted to talk about the campaign first? I love you. Um, oh, Aww. I love you too, Daddy. I have a legitimate question mm -hmm. because I think I know the answer, but I just want to. It's like it's like, but I don't have like absolute DM confirmation. Mm -hmm. Why the hell did Luna Sword keep getting pulled towards necromancy? Was that weird Raven? Was that the Raven Queen shit, or was All that right. just random shit that was happening? So that's a that's a thing that I maybe poorly explained or didn't explain clear enough. Um and. Admittedly, there are many things whenever you develop a campaign that you don't really think about how it works, and then I, I went, and then I make like a cool twist of like, oh, there was nothing wrong with the sword, and then I'm like, oh fuck, then how do I explain why it was flying all over the place? So I mean, so the I thing think that Luna found a meaning out of it. I'm just curious what the intention no, no, was. no. That's a good question because it does contradict something in the previous part of the campaign. So, uh, you know. Credit where it's not due, i.e. I didn't do a good job of explaining it myself at the time. Uh, I know this is a slight retcon, but uh, basically, um, there in the Lustrous Expanse, I have an idea that the power of belief is strong enough that it can uh, 
kind of manifest into magic, i.e. that's how things like clerics and paladins work, is their belief and faith in a thing is what gives it its power. You're um, going the Eberron route rather than the gods yeah. are just... That's what God's just there handing out yeah. power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that there's a note in the uh, notes that Laszlo has on the play on the characters in Vertheim about how it's like, hmm, I wonder how her sword is doing all of this. Perhaps it's a manifestation of her belief in the Raven Queen, you know, all that stuff akin to a paladin or cleric. So mm -hmm. that is my explanation for that. And perhaps her learning about the, pa you know, that all of this was just within her herself, meaning the Raven Queen would have maybe subconsciously caused the sword to go back to being normal. Yeah. I, like, like I said, I drew my own meaning from it. Um, I, I drew that it was little things of the Raven Queen trying to get my attention, like when she, like when she, like as Echo Dad, like reached out and stopped Luna when she was having that, like, sparring mm -hmm. that's that like angry sparring um those few times i so i found meeting out of it i was just curious what the like what the because me and you when we talked about this we were like i want i was like i want vague i want to be able to interpretate and i want to be able to be wrong so i was curious on just what the original intention was mm. I don't think it was poorly executed. I enjoyed it. Um, and uh, as the person who owns the character, I think I reserve the right to have the final say <laughs> awesome. that I liked how you did it. I'm glad. I'm glad. Also, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned uh, the, the art that you can see in the background, not the slideshow at the top right, the art that is showing everyone. This was done by our wonderful uh, cinematic artist, Kate, tactician Kate, who is great and Hell awesome. Yeah, Kate. And uh, my right hand girl that has also helped me like write a lot of the things that I kind of wrote myself into corner. She helped me figure out the thing about Luna's sword and where to go with Enoch's character and pretty much everything that I was stumped on. So thank you, Kate, oh. if you're listening. You helped me figure out and and kind of fix and patch all the a lot of the plot holes that would have been in Necrohunt otherwise. Ooh. That's interesting. I want to hear more about that. I want to hear more about so this is my burning question just constantly mm -hmm. because I don't know how many people in the chat know this, but there is a trailer for Necro Hunt that came out five years ago. And ever since I started clicking on the actual Necro Hunt sessions, that trailer on your personal channel kept getting recommended to me over and over. Oh, I really? need to know what the main, like what the big differences were between this session and all of the other ones that you've ran. Oh man, lots. Firstly, I, there was no Raven Queen so nonsense. There was no Thermilius Cog. There was was no uh, fucking like dirt on any witch taker or anything in fact like uh, for one uh, one major difference the notes that you were finding on Kara instead of being spread out uh, and I think this is a worse version they were all put in one place in Vertheim before it was called Vertheim uh, and they just found them all in while they were exploring and I feel like that was a little bit a too dense down. of information all yeah. at once yeah, that would have been terrible. Yeah. yeah. I like the way that it was drip fed to us as we like went yes. to location to location. And <laughs> I love that it wasn't like. Oh, hi, Blue. I love so much that it was just the random pranks of this one little little necromancer and not like anything sinister, like somebody trying to leave a paper trail. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, uh, I love how it turned out. Was Kara always like not the bad guy and Chandrell was always evil? Yes, always. Okay. Always. Oh, I had it where it was all okay. a conspiracy that Chandrell sh set up. Uh, also, her old name was Donna, but that was too confusing because Donna, Kara, too close together. Mm -hmm. um, would... So I changed it to Chandrell. Chandrell sounds more fancy anyway. Yes. So, well, okay. How many people? Sorry. Oh, I, I, I have a, I have a pretty somewhat morbid question in this aspect because. I, I got asked this a lot, especially uh, when I was finishing up D6, uh, Dawn Wright, was what would have happened if we had died? Like, if all of us had, had failed and there, and and Chandrell had their way, what would have happened? Okay, it, either, so I, I wouldn't, I would say that if the party had failed there are two different failures, I think. Either failed to bring back anything or failed in the sense that they gave Kara to Chandrell. Um, but although that might be considered a completion of the mission. So if the party had not brought any like conclusive end to this quest, likely 
Chandrell would have took even more drastic measures, maybe even broken out into her dragon form or whatever and laid waste to the land, uh, maybe went to war with the necromancers and caused untold amounts of, of death and despair and just like maybe launched the nation into another war, not only with the necromancers, but other nations as well who try to step in and be like, yo, cut this shit out. Oh, okay. this is fucked up, you big bony dragon. Or, alternatively, alternatively, this just stays under wraps. Chandrell continues to plot and is able to keep herself safe, but no one ever learns about anything that ever happened. Oh, okay. It's very fun. How many I people figured it out? Or rather, how... how I'm, when I say how many people, I mean, like, all the groups before us. You right. said you ran this a bunch of times. So, like... How many other people figured it out, and how early, and how much did you help them and us in figuring all that out? So there are two different points that the party would figure it out. Uh, because of the fact that I didn't lay clues out nearly as well as I did with you guys, because that's a new thing, and I'm very proud and happy about that, because that was not the case. Like I said, all the clues were at the, like, in Vertheim all at once. Um, so I feel like the mystery was less interesting and less well thought out. So they would either figure it out when they fought Kara and learned that she wasn't the Black Vein Queen, or they learned it at the end if they had pokeballed Kara, brought her back, and then, um, I don't know, were hesitant to give it back to Chandrell because there was a bunch of loose ends and they didn't know where she was going with it. I just love how much that we are just recalling and pokeballing at this point. Yeah, yeah. they're not mute crystals what? anymore. They're pokeballs. I'm so <laughs> yeah. sad that the pokeball worked and then it got smashed. I was the really hoping part. that Luna would have picked yeah, it up. Yeah, because like, you texted me. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You texted me and I was just so in the moment. I was, I was like, so ah, shit. Sad. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I can't so... pick it up. I don't have my turn. And I felt no. so bad after I ran away. I was like, oh my God, Kevin, I'm so sorry. This uh, could have been solved I, so I, fast. I These fuckers would have died. Died before they took it from Luna. Yeah. I, hey, I had a, I had Real quick. actually another uh, idea um, in the battle. Before you do, Aaron, um, what's up, Daddy? I just wanna I just wanna shout out Agent B Smith. He's a friend of mine, and he just oh, raided the chat. Oh yeah, thank you, Agent oh, yeah. B Smith, for for the raid. It's Welcome, great. everybody. Thank All right, thank you. Okay, back to back to your. Anyway, Aaron. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I still had my mute crystal the entire time, mm. and when the dragon came out, I thought. Could that have been possible? And this is more from Aaron to Joe. Is would that have been possible to use a mute crystal on that dragon? I would have said that it would only suck up one portion of the dragon, uh, okay. i.e., the portions that you were attacking and had to destroy one by one. Mm. Okay, I, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think it would have been uh, it would have been definitely useful to have just like, okay, I'm blind. Could I just throw this at the at the torso area and would have that would have solved that problem but then again we would have at risk uh if that thing broke out of the mute crystal because obviously lots of necrotic energy and magic and you know it couldn't contain abby why would i would think it would contain you know this draconic you could at least delay it while we came up with a plan though right Spe that is yeah, that i would, I would say true. that as well probably Okay, so that that's a mistake on my part. I just thought it wasn't going to work at all. Speaking of mute crystals, I... Uh, so, I, I read some of the questions in advance for this, and my favorite one was, like, what are some things that you would have done differently? Uh, right before Kara went through her portal and said, kill the bitch, I desperately wanted to throw my mute crystal at her. Just <gasps> sight unseen, yeah. capture her, and then we can have a conversation. I could have just told the group, like, we need her to lay a trap or something. And I mean, look, he the only... wouldn't have been mad as a player. I, like, that would have been yeah. very smart. <laughs> the, the only reason I didn't is because I had just saved the day in the fight against Bloodstride, and I really didn't want to steal more of the spotlight, like, Aww. like right after. But I really wanted to do it. If, like, as she was walking out, I'm like, God damn it, don't leave! If I were... If I were... <laughs> more evil i would have done that too yeah <laughs> there i don't think you were stealing the spotlight debbie i thought no, that, that was, was a, a really that was like move. nathaniel coming in clutch i think oh yeah i don't i think if that if your move had not worked i'm pretty sure that vertheim would have died i don't think you were taking up too much spotlight yeah. you were I'm, showing yeah. off your skills 
I'm saying I was worried that I would be stealing the spotlight if I did that and then also just unilaterally stole uh, Kara. Yeah. yeah. It would have been a bit much for one person and well, I was I like, no, no, I give everybody their fun. I appreciate you being conscious about how much time you are uh, basically uh, in the, uh, what is it? In the camera, screen, screen time, there it is. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that you are conscious about it, but I, I will say that you did a good job of uh, making sure that other people had their chances as well. <laughs> Me and Joe, uh, I, I don't know if anybody has anybody think anything else they want to say right away, but like... <laughs> I, me and Joe kept just talking at length about what the best way to, like... I kept going to Joe about crazy shit I wanted to do and just saying, I, I don't know what your plans are, but I want to, like... Like, with, in Chester City, I wanted to set the protectors up against the the spine of death and had have the protectors fight bloodstride to either get the protectors killed or learn something about bloodstride that we didn't know already <laughs> and i messaged joe i'm like i want to do all this crazy shit and i have no idea what your plan is but this is my intention and then it didn't go that way and i was perfectly happy with it but like i just kept messessaging him <laughs> crazy shit like that and seeing what stuck honestly i, mean, I, I do apologize that, that i'm not as <laughs> 8D no, chess it's... to be able to to, no. to make way for that sort of no. stuff because I would have loved it's to great. and that would have been great. Uh, it, it's great, dude. Fine. Like I, I knew that most of it wasn't going to work anyway. That's why I messaged you because I didn't want to just like try to strong arm the campaign. I messaged you on things I wasn't sure no, about were that were super big. Yeah, I appreciate that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I messaged. I, I had... um... Oh, sorry. Oh, I, you, I... you were gone. Um, I was gonna say I messaged Joe. Um during the main fight at the end, and I was like, kill me, you won't do it, fucking coward. <laughs> oh my god. God damn it, I knew you were, I knew you were trying to die. Yeah. No, no, I was no. like, give me a cold I, I saw the writing on the wall. wall. I saw the writing on the wall, and that's why I'm so glad that rage damage came in clutch, because I swear to god, if Renee had died there, Luna was gonna lose her fucking mind. I was like, this would be a cool ending for her, do it. No, because well, what you about did, your Well, you brother? did taunt the torso, and I was like, alright, it's coming for you now. Oh. It, it's coming oh, for God. you and it's gonna deal damage at the end of everyone's turn because it's like on its last leg yeah there's a reason Literally. there's a reason that renee was so reckless in that fight there is a yeah, reason yeah. why she was so <gasps> blatantly Wait. reckless in that fight cammy hmm? remember all the letters yes Letters. Can, Would can... you like me to read them? Yes, yes please. please. I've been carrying them in my pocket this whole know. fucking time. I didn't open okay. one of them. Okay, well, that's going to take a hot minute if, if y'all don't oh, mind me uh, Like, let's you, pick you... one. Let's pick one, because I wrote one to each of the team members. I wrote one to Francis. I wrote one to Renee's uh, mother. Uh, and I wrote one to Nanette. Do you have oh. them all, like, so you, so I you have, have them all, all like, in a document. Down. I have them you all should, in a document. You should share that document for people to read. Oh mm -hmm. God! Mm. Uh, I I am I'm a little scared to find out what you wrote, Mr. Enoch. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Enoch, call Mr. Mr. Solomon. One. First... You are a dick. Love Renee Bordeaux. P.S. Go it fuck says, yourself. It says, dear you, fuck you in particular. That's all it says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like... I'm just so upset. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dad. Like, oh, you're, you're good. It's just ball. like, Daniel. Enoch, like, pulling the picture down is like, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> I it was just like, when I when I heard you talking about that letter thing, because I know exactly why you did it. I know why you did it. You saw what I posted on Twitter. You know, I, I know where this that. came and from. And now, I want to write one of those for all of my characters now. Mm -hmm. Just so I can like mess with the other players if I die. Mm -hmm. like, just that for is a, the best thing. Just for some some background, um, last year I had a campaign in which uh, a private campaign in which one of our PCs died, and in case they died, the player had written letters to all of us. And the one they wrote to me, this character and my character had a very like mother to, uh, mother son relationship. They just had like a really sweet way that they interacted, and it was all like so sweet and it's like you remind me what i'm fighting for you remind me i need to save my mom and i just hope that you'll be okay you've been fighting for so long but you stay happy and it was just like ah my heart back baby boy no and then cammy commented on the tweet and was like 
And I'm like, no, bitch, I know what you're doing here. As soon as you're like talking about these letters to Nathaniel, and I'm like, no, don't do this to me. If you die, I'll cry, <laughs> and then I'll okay. cry again. That is, that is specifically why I did it, because I was like, that is so evil and vile, and I love it. <laughs> oh no, it's so good. It's so, I it's such it. a good oh, idea. But... I will say, if I could interrupt um, at, oh, the end, at the end of that thought, I will say, uh, that if we could, uh, I want to go just a little bit of structure because I do I do have a limited amount of time today because I will be playing yeah. in the Unexpectables later. Right. So I only have two hours to spare. I would like to start out with some of the more frequently asked general questions and then we can lead into the more questions that uh, we've been thinking about or like seen in the chat or seen in the comments under Twitter and YouTube. Yes. Can sure. I make so a the small recommendation so we don't all talk out for each other? Take turns. Uh, well, I was gonna ask if we could roll for initiative one more time to see who goes <laughs> oh, first. <laughs> oh god, I got you know what? Yeah, let me let me pull up the thing because this one, I I have it where I have player question, DM question, player question, DM question. So yeah, we can ah, we can okay. uh, roll initiative to see who goes first and as far as the player question. So what? let's go to the roll twenty. Time. Let me open uh, one more time, real quick. The last time, guys. I'm gonna go to my D&D Beyond and just Here's where I roll in that one. In there. Hold on. I will bring up the hey initiative. Boop. All right, turn order is up. All right, don't All forget right. to put your tokens on, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta put your tokens on the board. Hold on, I'm trying Sorry, to- Sorry, I didn't wanna really complicate things. <laughs> no, this works. Complicated it. I, I would've just picked Chandrel? at random. Chandrel, what? Chandrel is- Chandrel is on the initiative. Chandrel's dead. dead. Chat. <laughs> Oh no, she's back. Chandrel's like, hey. Oh no, this isn't a Q&A at all. We only roll oh, 20s <laughs> in this house. <laughs> of course, your final roll as Nathaniel was a goddamn 20. We only no. roll 20s in this house. There we go. Hold on, let me grab my... The initiative so was just sorry, never removed so from last time. I, again, this is not a Q&A. Joe has brought us in for Kara, for Kara's revenge. We are all <laughs> going to die. And roll. Why do I? Only... We've all grown to the size of the world map. We're I got now. a whole twelve. Nice. Uh, fucking right. Luna was already a big bitch. And Aaron. Uh, I'm 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 getting there. I I didn't have any of this open. I believe in you. <laughs> you can I do it. In me too. You'll never beat me. While we're waiting, dear Nathaniel. No I'm kidding. <laughs> I just I just want to say, like, fucking. Hey. Enoch called it in one the very first session by pulling a gun out on me and saying he didn't trust me. Oh, did I? Yay. All right, so this will be the order. It will be Davy, yeah. then Shelby, then Cammy, then Aaron. Yeah. So, All right. first do question What was the inspiration for your characters, starting with Davy? Uh, so I talked about this, I don't know when, uh, but when I make a character, I usually either come up with, I usually think of music first because I love music with a lot of like important lyrics uh in this case it was the death note musical yes there is a musical for it uh but in addition i like drawing from like historical characters uh as well as fictional so in addition to trying to draw from both l and light i didn't really like either of them more than the other so i kind of tried to mix them two uh, i also pulled a lot of my like thief taker vibes from both javert from les miserables uh, and uh, Jonathan Wild, the, the Jonathan Wild was the biggest inspiration. Being honest, uh, his whole story is kind of similar to Nathaniel's in that he was basically a, a bounty hunter. They called him the Thief Taker General of London, uh, but he was secretly super corrupt and would steal people's shit only for those people to come to him, and then he'd be all like, "I'm on the case. I'll find the person who stole your shit, and then arrest some random person." Uh, so yeah, those would be my major inspirations. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I love how gray and like kind of very, like Nathaniel doesn't give a shit about like what happens in between so long as the end, yeah, and the ends justify the means. Like that's, oh, I yeah. feel like his creed. Well, he's embodiment. Absolutely. That, yeah. uh, next, Shelby, uh, what inspired your character, Luna? So when I first came up with her, I was very inspired by Witcher. I had just played through Witcher, th uh, I just finished Witcher 3 because um, I was very late to that party. I'd started the books, um, and she was meant to... I think before I mentioned before that I was originally going to try and play a blood hunter before I decided I didn't want to tie her to an organization or anything. I just wanted Luna to be an independent sellsword. 
Mm -hmm. But she softened up a lot more because I expected her to be a bit more cocky. I mean, Luna was definitely like, you know, she knew her strength, but she wasn't as like, I'm the strongest in the land like I thought she was going to be. Um, she softened up a lot and she kind of... I feel like I pulled a lot more of the stronger parts out of my personality because she aggressively moms everybody and she's loud. <laughs> so... Very nice. Uh, Cammy, what inspired Renee? If um, Nathaniel was Javert, then my girl was a combination of Anjola and, um, oh god, um, what is the other dude's name who fell in love? Oh god. Marius. Uh, Marius. Darius. Marius, not Darius, Marius. Darius. But basically, like, think all of the boys from Les Mes singing Red Blood of Angry Men. Um, <laughs> because when we were first proposed this whole campaign idea um and it was like we gotta come up with some characters i was like i want to play a bard and the dad was like well i was gonna play a bard but that's okay and i was like well and it was like well, we can both play bards and then we went bard buddies like bard friends do they have a relationship hold on and we like booked it over to another chat and started discussing we were like okay 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 how are they related like we gotta do this now i can confirm this is exactly what happened i was yeah, that, I didn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if um Nathaniel was the brain, then Renee was going to be like the the mouth. Like basically I thought of her as like the the mouth for Nathaniel of like if he ever didn't want to do anything like super directly or if he didn't want to use his magic specifically, she would step in and be like, What's up everybody? Time to use my girlish charm. <laughs> like Chat saying Barty um, Cot movie. <laughs> Barty Cot. But yeah, she very much um I don't I, my personality bled through into her when she started getting really flustered really <laughs> fast. Um, I originally imagined her like far more suave, like think the dance with Rotak, but like all the time. I think Ooh. her personality constantly smooth and suave and under control. Accidentally let the anxiety sleep out. <laughs> um, well, not like the anxiety, but this in the sense of like, She's still sort of winging it, like a lot of my characters tend to do. Um, I have another bard character, Danny. Um, comparing the two, Danny is a, oh shoot, okay, I can work with this. Uh, I can just wing it. And Renee's like, oh, of course this is happening. Okay, I guess I'm gonna fucking wing it. Like, same words, totally different, like, process behind them. Wonderful. And lastly, Aaron, what was the inspiration behind Enoch? Uh, I'd imagine it was a, a multitude of things, mainly anime stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, the first idea that came to mind was Vash the Stampede from the Trigun series, because I've always loved, I, I always loved like space cowboy kind of things. And while Vash is a much more wholesome character who doesn't want to kill while Enoch is on the on the warpath at the start. Um, I also wanted to pull in a lot of ideas of you could definitely play a cowboy in this fantasy game. And I also really love the idea of like outlaws and uh, and like gentlemen outlaws and stuff like that. Uh, while also like playing a character that was very intense definitely like but also like still had a heart of gold and that was always the big thing it's just that i wanted to put into like like especially when it came to like the concept of like flaws and stuff like that it's just like there are rules to follow that way if those rules are broken it can lead to altercation and I had a very simple through line and then in eventuality as he would grow throughout the campaign that would change but yeah like a big thing is just like Vash the Stampede, uh, Spike Spiegel, Ryuji from Persona 5 uh, and uh, god uh, <laughs> I know there's one more uh, god uh, Jeez, there, I know there's one more, but like one of the big things is just like I this is, by the way, my first campaign that I've ever done as a player, you know, start to completion. 
and I've been running games for years and years and years. I've always loved the concept of like bringing in guns for for D and D and firearms and stuff like that because it, you know, it, it's not too it's not too much of a long shot that we have this magical fantasy world that you know these pieces of technology, whilst still new, can still exist. And that's what right. I love. It's a about. fantasy. It can have. Yeah. It is advanced as you say it is, not because it yeah. can't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's that's what I really enjoyed about about making this character. It's just like all the ideas of like outlaws and stuff like that, but also still being a good person at their core. Mm. And the thing that haunts them is like eventually their actions coming to get them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Awesome. So the next question, I so I'm dividing these up into player, then DM, then player. Uh, the next question I think I can answer is uh, generally the general question FAQ. What was the character creation process? So I told the players, I said, you're level three and your character has a reputation already that already exists doing something. Whatever it was, I let them decide what it was. But I told them you have done something to gain notice of the Viscount. Like the Viscount has been keeping tabs on you. So... And that is also kind of how I implemented their backstory into the world and have the world have it, them feel like they exist in the world because characters will acknowledge the things that they've done and characters will exist as a result of things that they've done, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I feel like that's a nice tool and I highly recommend any DM using it, you know, using their reputation as a means for putting them in the campaign in the first place. That way, you know, you can use that like more and recycle it and stuff. Yeah, like I know a guy and stuff. Yeah. It was a very refreshing way to do, to I think, to do a very classic, like, you know, you all meet because you're hired by the same person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But rather than you're just a bunch of fuckers who picked up the same flyer, it's like, oh no, you're all, you all have a very particular set of skills and I'm asking you to go after somebody. <laughs> yeah. All right, and the next question for the players is, if the campaign wasn't time-gated, what NPCs or side quests do you wish you could do? Starting with Davi. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? If the campaign was not time-gated, what NPCs or side quests do you wish that you could have done? Ooh. I see, okay. Uh, I think more things in Belkinus proper would have been interesting. Uh, as far as, like, side quests go, I think we did everything that we wanted to, despite the time limit. Uh, and as NPCs go, there aren't a lot that I think needed more fleshing out. I think Nanette could have had a little bit more. I think Nanette uh, could have had I agree. a little bit more. Yeah. I agree with but that. But I think, other than that, I can't think of a single NPC where I'm like, yeah, this person didn't get their time that they needed. Uh, the only, like, so I have to default to, like, places, uh, because we have all of the places that we've been to, and out of the places that we've been to, Belkinus, despite being the name of the country that we're in, didn't get a whole lot of personality to it, uh, as much as Chester City or Cloveway did, uh, and that was just because the moment we started, we left, and then we were there just to end. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if I had no time limit, then I would have done some cool stuff in Belkinus, maybe be a witch taker for a sec. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. And I, I agree. I definitely have points in the campaign where I look back and I'm like, I wish I had given that place or person more things to do. Oh, to just like to clarify, I think that you did perfectly well. I don't think I think if you included more things to do or time or like or things. Yeah. If you included more things to do in Belkinus with the time we had, it would have felt clunky. You did the best yeah. that you could as far as where we went. It's just, if we had all the time in the world, I would have gone to the one place we didn't get much to do in. Yeah, I appreciate it, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's true. It's such as the nature of an improv, like, live sort of yeah. game deal. It's like, you, it's different from making, like, a show or movie. Anyway, uh, Shelby, what, anything that you would have liked to spend more time on or with uh, had there not been a time limit? Um... Honestly, I think I would have liked to explore more of Ruggawood and mm. more of their protector shenanigans in Ruggawood. Because that more came back during Chester City, and it was perfectly fine when it did. Um, besides, like, our brief meeting when we had to go save Mirth. Um, I don't know, I would have liked to know more about what they were doing in Ruggawood. Um, just because we know they were extorting people, but I would have liked to know, like, the extent, or maybe Luna would have liked to know the extent if, uh, certain things had not been happening at the time. But mm -hmm. really, I think I mostly agree with Dabby. Most 
more Belkinus proper stuff. But like you said, it's the nature of the beast. Live D&D is not the same thing as, as playing at the table. There's a lot more you have to be, like, conscious of. So I think mm-hmm. you did the best of what you could. I, I definitely came out with a fulfilled story and very few questions. And what I did have, we're answering now. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think yeah. that it went pretty well. I will I will have something to say about that time gate as well uh, later on. But uh, Cammy, anything that you wish you would have gotten to do had you had it not been time gated um if it hadn't been time gated i would have liked to connect more with the protectors in that making that connection between some of those people being from renee's old gang i think would have been really interesting to like sort of delve into um because that's sort of like happened near the end and sort and that gave that gave renee a lot of questions we're not gonna lie but um i didn't really get to like touch on that that's just a personal thing though mm-hmm. um and like um like uh daddy said nanette would have been fun to to delve a little bit more into but i understood that we had we were on a time schedule um so yeah yeah, and this is this that is good person. for me as well because this is feedback for me as a DM on what I can do better. So I, I appreciate yeah, yeah. you guys being honest with Every, me. Everything yeah. else felt like really well timed to me. So, and if we, if there were more of that, I feel like I would have been put too much in the spotlight. And I would have been like, oh, uh, oh, uh, mm-hmm. look over there in the corner, <laughs> someone else. <laughs> like, and lastly, yeah. Aaron, anything that you wish you would have gotten to do had there not been a time limit? Uh, I think. The biggest thing for me would have been the church in Chester City, like that that whole song and dance with like like people taking money to like do things for like prayers, and I'm all like, oh god, I'm about to pull a Jesus Christ on this <laughs> because like in all reality, it's just like from Enoch's perspective, prayer is free. You know, going to your your home church should be free. You know, donations are useful, definitely, but like. Uh, from my perspective i really wish i could have delved a little bit more into what that would have been like either corruption or you know uh you know kind of wrecking the established order because that seems like something i would have done uh but definitely it was just like i felt as enoch very personally like disappointed that this entire establishment is basically taking people's money just so that way they can walk into their faith and i i find that disgusting and it's almost like it's it's that level of televangelist that i personally as aaron hate and i would like i i i would have just delved deep into that but unfortunately no time for it Mm -hmm. but eh, i mean it like it doesn't bother me that much because at least in the end story it, there's conclusions to it and i really and i really enjoy that it's just like yeah that guy got fucked over good and i'm like thank god mm-hmm. <laughs> so i guess i can talk about my thought process behind giving a time gate uh, just to give some perspective this is not an excuse by the way because you know some people may have criticisms as to giving it a time gate and making it a railroad and it is a railroad i do consider this campaign more of a railroad than a sandbox personally yeah um and it is and there i don't think there's anything wrong with that however um my thought process for making it a time gate was because um kind of more so this kind of trying to give the players a push and direction and always you know giving them enough time to to do stuff but not do everything you know because i i feel as though sometimes campaigns can slow down and games can slow down when the players never want to move on and they want to do everything right um that said there's nothing wrong with that either that's just my personal preference and my time gate was kind of a means to try and push them towards making progress and having to make sacrifices with where they put their time and questing and to show that they can't solve every problem. Now, whether or not I did this well, I think is going to be up to your uh, everyone's own interpretation. And I don't think there's any way, any wrong way to look at it, even if you believe that I did it the complete wrong way and I could have easily done it better. Um, but that is just the mindset that I'm in. 
That said, I do see ways that I could have done it better in the future without making a flat, you have two weeks to do this, just like, or else. Um, I, I do yeah. f think I have thought of new ways to make it urgent, but not like too urgent, like urgent in the uncertainty sense rather than urgent in like, here's your flat time limit. Uh, like maybe like left like bread crumbs of like oh shit's going on like if we don't stop it soon something's gonna happen we don't know what but it's gonna happen yeah like, and we don't know when yeah I I, I want to yeah, do yeah, we don't yeah. know what and we don't know when that kind of urgency mm. I think that's the way to do it how I'm how to yeah. do that I don't know I'll have to figure it out but uh, yeah it is uh Alrighty. all right uh next question will be for me is what parts of necro hunt were the most difficult to plan slash develop basically just making just like all the the new the like subplots and like character background stuff like trying to remember what strings are in the air and when to pull them and when to tie them up and like all that stuff because like uh, it was easy when it, I was just thinking of one or two, but then when there's like five or six, I'm like, oh, fuck. And like, thank goodness for Kate for helping me out with that. But yeah, just just that. And sometimes uh, on the pl uh, the players can account for this as well, that sometimes I just flat out forgot some things. And then they're like, wait, what happened with this? I was like, oh, shit, I totally forgot that I mentioned that or I did that. And basically, I think that's just uh that's a thing that i gotta work on and that was definitely the most difficult part was just forgetting things whenever there's so many plates spinning in the air uh yeah um and plot holes of course you know with luna's sword and like the her dad's uh statue and nanette like oh what's she doing here uh you know where where is she going now and like all that stuff uh who is therm why is he doing all this stuff yeah yeah, basically spinning plates, the, the usual thing DMs run into. <laughs> uh, next question frequently asked. If you were to meet your characters, how do you imagine the interaction would go? Starting with Davi. Oh, I would fucking hate this guy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so first yeah, of all, I would think, worse. holy shit, I made you. I, I, I am your father. Don't kill me. Uh... But like, no, Nathaniel is a narcissist who would probably entirely ignore me because I have nothing to do with his, like, upward slide to power. <laughs> and I would hate him because he's just a prick. Like, he, he hides it behind a veneer of not stating his opinion on things. But like, the guy's just not nice. <laughs> the, the only time he's nice is when he's trying to make somebody think that he's nice. Right, and you Otherwise, have that in, yeah. you have that further perspective because you know what he's thinking because you are you are yeah. making up what he's thinking. Yeah, so like I suppose like assuming this was a world where I didn't know who Nathaniel was, if I had something he wanted, he would probably seem like a kind of chill guy. Like he's not going to be super friends with me unless he desperately needs something right now and will throw like me away as soon as he gets the chance. But like he knows how to seem relatable if he needs something. Otherwise, he will be completely ambivalent towards you outwardly. Uh, so yeah, probably not a fun time. <laughs> uh, Shelby, if you were to meet Luna, how would that interaction go down? Oh, Luna's intense. I don't think I can handle her intensity. I can barely handle playing her for four hours. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I feel like it would depend on what mood I found her in. Did I find? Did I meet her after a, a job, or did I meet her while she's at a bar? Because those are two different Lunas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like Luna's the kind of person that kind of gets along with everyone until you piss her off, and she's relatively hard to piss off. She's pretty chill. If you're not a dick, she's not gonna, you know, be super up in your face. Uh, I don't know probably get yelled at a lot because my mom friends yell at me all the time so I, i'm kind of what used to that <laughs> all right uh cammy if you were to meet renee how do how does that interaction would you see it going down um karaoke there'd be some karaoke involved <laughs> <laughs> and i'd love to see it too like, a cammy like, and renee if anything it. it'd be at like a karaoke bar and then she'd be like oh i like your style and then i'd be like oh yeah and then like if she were singing out to harmony she'd be like yeah and then we start singing together like yeah and then that would be it it would be like a one-time thing never see each other again but remember <laughs> each other fondly and aaron if you were to meet enoch how would that go down 
Uh, a few things. First off, oh, dude, you have a robot R. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that our our major interactions, I would imagine, is that we would sit there and talk for hours on end about our lives. Like I, I like I would, I would just listen to Enoch talk about his entire life, start to finish. If, if like if he was like a true real person. Uh, <laughs> that isn't from my imagination. Um, but also I, I feel like, like I would just try and like, see what things he would end up confiding in, 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 in all eventuality. And then talk about a lot of, uh, yeah, talk a lot about, I would say religious points of view, because me personally, I, 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 ha I have my own, well, I, I'm not going to get into that whole song and dance, but like I have my points of view. I would imagine he would have his points of view. Uh, we would definitely show off each other's corgis, definitely. Uh, but like, keep in mind, Kuro was totally based off of, you know, Banjo because I really love corgis. And the fact that as an artificer, you could literally make a tiny creature, whatever you want it, however you want it to look at. And for flavor, it's just going to be this. Yeah, tiny winged corgi that can fly. That was really the main idea mm -hmm. for that. But yeah, we would just do a lot of talking. Probably end up being friends in the end. But uh, I imagine one of us would get pissed off at some point, but then we just get over it. <laughs> now, here's a question from good old Tavern Cat Records. And this is going to be a uni unique case where I take a question from the chat before it's time to take questions from chat because we're not doing that yeah. yet. But uh, Tavern Cat Records, i.e. the person who composed uh, the majority of the soundtrack to Belkinus Necrohunt. Thank you. Yeah! Thank you, Tavern Woo! Cat. Uh, and they have a question for me about the final battle. How long did it take for you to figure out the concept about the final battle and how the mechanics would go? So the concept of it was very easy because I already had it. Uh, in mind, because Kara was always going to turn into an, or rather, Chandrell was always going to turn into an undead dragon. And in, in every version, uh, I have it that she siphoned too much, she couldn't handle it, uh, or she would get resurrected and become a monstrosity because resurrection doesn't exist in this world, in, uh, except for in rare occasions. Um, but, um,. Yeah, she was always going to be a dragon. However, the one major difference in this battle compared to previous ones is minions. Because, goddamn, that is my biggest flaw as a DM, is I keep forgetting about action economy and giving bosses just a singular boss to fight. Uh, and players a singular boss to fight. And then they wreck it because they take four turns before the boss can even do one. Also, legendary yeah. actions are a thing I keep forgetting exist. And they can happen anytime. Um... So basically taking into account legendary actions, giving more than one target. So uh, older versions of the dragon didn't have segmented parts that the party had to attack. Uh, there were no like uh, wraiths in the room to summon specters like it, it happened here. There were much fewer guards. Uh, it was mostly just Chandrell, old Chandrell, AKA Donna, uh, Laszlo and Thorn. And that was kind of it. But yeah, I'm trying to add in more stuff. And that was the main new thing is segmented dragon and minions. Can I ask a question? Uh, go ahead. Was his name always Laszlo Dungbite? So Laszlo was his old name, but I thought that's silly. Let's call him Bloodstride. But then my wow. old my older players were just like, uh, Laszlo's still funny though. You should keep it around. I'm like, you know what? I will. That's his real name now. Uh, I appreciate this. Yeah. So Mid running. fun, fun little trivia. That was his old name. Dungbite was new though. I, uh, Dungbite was improv. Okay. <laughs> Love that. Uh, actually, I, I also have another question for you, Joe. Go ahead. Because this, this would have been very interesting because at the time that I would be at the level for it, if I had decided to bring Ignis into this campaign instead of moving him to the scales above, uh, how would you have handled the concept of, like, revivify? Because Ignis being a divine soul sorcerer, Having, uh, like, he would find a way to try and get diamonds and stuff like that for the Revivify spell. What would you had done in so, that aspect? So, if you had used Revivify on the players, I would have said that there would be temporary but drastic side effects that I would have found some way for the players to uh, basically solve. For NPCs, drastic side effects that would stay forever. 
uh, I don't know, maybe like a horrible growth, maybe black permanent black veins on a part of their body where Revivify was cast. Uh, maybe okay. they lost their memory. Uh, just like all this stuff because uh, bringing back the soul in the Lustrous Expanse is hard incredibly hard yeah. and difficult and not common and you know as you saw in necrohunt uh causes horrible things to happen yeah yep. oh god yeah that <laughs> okay. was that, and that's why i wanted to explore i can talk more about the exploration of necromancy because i find necromancy a fascinating subject which is why i wanted to make base a whole campaign uh around it but the next actual yeah. question which i can answer quickly is everyone wants to know what the heck does the stick of stickiness do <laughs> yes please tell me i need to know oh my god the reveal the, the chekhov's the gun do? what is the stick of stickiness the stick of stickiness is my favorite homebrew item that i like to include in every campaign and every campaign it does something different and in this one uh i'm just gonna say it's re gonna remain a mystery forever what? and up Screw to interpretation oh. but i will yeah. say i will say the origins of the stick the stick was from Ber vertheim that stick had a dragon in it you know that you know the you know the uh you know, that uh vine where it's like hey look at this umbrella i got that's what the stick does you can't I'm tell me otherwise i'm boycotting this i'm out of here <laughs> but yeah, the only the reason i was here to, was to learn this question but yeah, what? like, uh, the stick was from Vertheim, <laughs> i.e., you know, interdimensional item for, you know, remember the guard was like, this is interdimensional, it's from another dimension. Uh, and there were clues, there are trees around Vertheim that I would have taken into account if anyone decided to investigate them, I would have said, it has a very similar texture to the stick of stickiness. Can I ask oh. how the hell it came into the hands of Grick yet? Can we at least know that? Yeah. Where the fuck did this goblin yeah. get this? I'm gonna say that is also open to interpretation. I, oh, I don't have an answer. Yeah. I don't have an, the real, the less satisfying but truer answer is I don't have an answer for that. You know what? I'm just well, gonna it, it, choose to believe that Grick yet stumbled into Vertheim and then stumbled out of it because that seems like, on brand. Whoa. This is like I asking any, this is like asking any indie music writer, hey, what do your <laughs> lyrics mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to interpretation and i i'm gonna keep it mostly a mystery i will never flat out say what the stick of stickiness does because i think the stick of stickiness is more interesting when you don't know what it does and I, okay, i'm gonna keep so it that, that way. means for if you ever run a live campaign again players i know you might listen to this Use the fucking stick of stickiness if you find it. You find, find out, out what it does. Find it around. Find out what it does. Oh, Activate it looks it. like we lost half our party. <laughs> no, At least no, you'll know what it like does. does. The Dude, burning this desire. Is, this is Dude, like we... playing Russian roulette with a deck of many things. It, it, it's 30% good, 70% fuck. To be fair, it made me rich, so maybe that's what <laughs> yeah. it really did. In the end, its magical property was giving me mad bank. This said my, even my mom wouldn't tell me what it was. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Uh for the players. How did the campaign change your character? And how does it compare to what you were expecting them to end up uh, uh where Ooh. you were expecting them to end up character wise? Davy? Uh right. So this is a little strange. I actually went back and rewatched the first session of Necro Hunt, and I didn't even notice until rewatching that like my voice for Nathaniel changed somewhere down the line. Uh, his personality didn't change, but I got a lot more like interested in speaking. Uh, I think strangely enough, I originally kind of wanted to make him a complete recluse and be very bad at talking to people just at all and the his whole deal was that he was terrible at talking to anyone so he just immediately defaulted to charms so that he would never have to learn social skills mm. uh and that kind of bled through like obviously he has like he's not the best at acting like a normal person but then he just became a master manipulator constantly uh so yeah, I, I think when I when I first envisioned him, I wanted him to just suck at any normal conversation that involved charisma checks, unless they were explicitly involving his charms. I don't even think persuasion was one of the things I had a good stat in. Mm. Like, I don't think I, I don't think I pr got you had proficiency really high in persuasion. deception, but not per not persuasion. Yeah, you yeah, were deception very high in deception. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
All right, that was it. Anyway. Yeah. All right, uh, Shelby. Uh, how did your character change? Uh, how did the, the uh, events of the campaign change, Luna? And how does that compare to how you what you were expecting? Well, I, I said before that Luna turned into something a lot softer, and that was largely due to Eliza. I have it was that's my like natural love for kids coming out. Fucking, you can't put like a crying child in a game in front of me and not expect me to fucking melt. Um, but. I didn't expect her to go with the end because honestly I'm gonna be quite honest I wrote Luna to be a woman who'd be like all right I'll just walk in do this and then I'm going back into the mountains and no one's gonna fuck with me I've got my own shit to do I didn't expect her to suddenly be like oh my god all of these cello swords they're talented but they're stupid I need <laughs> to fix this I didn't expect her just to become like mom of Chester City like she kind of turned into um I didn't expect any of her mom tendencies, honestly. Um, she grew attached. But I'm really glad. Aww. Well, and I, I really, I really like that. Um, because like, especially because like her and Scorpio, I imagine their relationship was a lot different. But I like how we did it because originally they were supposed to be more like, not hate, not like I hate you, I love you, but they were very, much more competitive than uh, um, in my head. But I really like that. No, it, Luna has, like, a bit more of a soft side when she was kind of, you know, Luna's a hard-ass, and she's a hardened monster hunter. So seeing her being able to turn around and be like, no, I just want to use someone as a pillow tonight, and you're coming with me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Was, like, like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. Or, and, like, and just the fact that, like, they still had some competitive moments. They still argue about their kill counts. That never ends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they will argue about that till the end of their lives. Um, <laughs> I, I killed like she... dinner tonight. It's just oh, like, I... no, no, I kill dinner every night. Yeah, well, no, they still argue about who got the uh, who got the kill on the bear skin that um, Scorpio oh, wears. God. Um, because fun fact, I don't know if I ever got a chance to really fully explain this, but that bear was the first was the hunt that they met each other on. Hmm. The the bear skin yeah. Scorpio wears. That's the. Like, Luna gave it to him, because what happened, it's where, how Luna got the scar on her face, but she never, I never got a chance to fully sit down and talk about it. Luna was a raging bitch when she was that age, because her her dad had just died, <laughs> she was dealing with a lot of shit, and she used hunting to deal with that, uh, with that trauma of losing, like, her one constant parent. So, um, when she met Scorpio, they spent more time fighting each other, and the bear found them, um... Scorpio technically got the killing shot on the bear. I'm just saying it now. But Luna is the one who skinned it. So they they constantly go back and forth about that. Which also, uh, side note, I want to say thank you for, you know, giving me trust to run an NPC that has an ongoing romance with yours. Uh, and I find it, you know, very... And thank all of the players as well for trusting me to run romance for your characters. Not only with an ongoing one, but one that has ended and potentially new one with uh, Renee and a rocky one with uh, with Enoch as well. I, I think that's very interesting that every... Like, the three characters aside from Nathaniel all had, like, their own different experience involving romance. And uh, I appreciate you guys trusting me with, with doing that because I know romance in D&D can be a rocky and messy thing to deal with yeah oh well, it's something that I, I i i don't know um i like to ground my characters relationships in the world and almost every character i write has had some sort of a romantic relationship whether it be past or present um just because that's, that's fucking how humans work Mo like most humans have looked at another human and been like yo i like this like <laughs> hey, that, obviously i don't want to say got that buckets as of chicken <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that as subjectively <laughs> as, as that, but, like, that's a very common thing for, like, the human experience, so it's something I always try to incorporate, and I, I like how you did it, and uh, I thank you for, like, treating it delicately and treating it with the respect it needed, and it, thank you. Um, like, the first Fade to Black scene was great, You did we didn't go too far, nothing was pushed, nothing was, like, grossly alluded to, it was just, it was really nice. It was really nice. Yeah, just like okay. just like a very fancy. Oh, they flocking. Yeah, well, and it's like fucking. Why not, man? Yeah, why not? Course. I I find it funny that Luna did it before any either of the bards. So you know, it's <laughs> fine. I, I yeah. Actually, there's actually a reason that Renee very much like I made her so that she could flirt. But mm -hmm. I liked her whole idea that she always puts on a performance and like her most treasured relationships are people who can see like immediately through that and know that something's wrong. 
Yeah. And that's sort of like a universal thing with a lot of my characters in that they put on whatever performance they need to specifically, whether or not that is to broodingly go away and like not talk to anybody like Ileana or like Danny and a little, like Renee, they very much are like, haha, LMAO, look at me, nothing's wrong. And they like laugh it off. So or what you're like saying is really well. Team Nanette, not Team Rotak. Rotak <laughs> was a very fun time. Nanette is the one who immediately sees through all of that. And so mm. Renee very much appreciates that because it feels honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rotak is a fun drink. Nanette is for life. Yeah. Anyway. But Nanette is like the wine you have at the end of your day. Yeah. Oh, Sorry about that tangent. Uh, anyway, yes. Uh, how <laughs> the cam- character change your character and how does it compare to what you were expecting? Cami with uh, Renee. Renee's ending, um, to me, feels very bittersweet in that um, she had this, she basically was wearing rose tinted glasses for a majority of her time. She didn't mind living in the gray area. She didn't mind any of that because she believed in what she was doing was right. Um, Basically, she had been roped into Nathaniel shenanigans and only through the end of that campaign, particularly at the very end, she kind of realized, oh, shit, I've been lying to myself. Like, I I ju- did this entire thing to try and stop necromancers who I now find aren't that bad. And the one person who I've been confiding in a lot did not confide in me. I got to rethink what I'm doing. Um, and so that's why initially she wasn't even thinking about going back to the witch takers. Damn, that sounds world until shattering. Nathaniel, yeah, until Nathaniel said, like, I need someone to take over, Renee. And she's like, oh. Uh, and that's why she hesitated for a second because she's like, do I really want to go back? Is that what I want to do with my life? Like, I don't know. Especially because, like, after seeing that, I was like, well, what are the witch takers now? Like, what? what is this thing that I built my life around? Um, so because she ends up taking up the mantle again, I think initially I was just going to have her end up being like the, the one of the people who at the end like went along with everybody going, haha, yeah, drinks, party, we did it, it's over. But she ended up being very existential at the end going, oh no. <laughs> like, mm. yeah. So yeah, she had a very, to me, like bittersweet feeling at the end. She did end up growing and maturing by the end, but it definitely like not seeing it um, in the end of that session, it took some time for her to recover. Mm-hmm. You think it hardened her? I think it hardened her a lot. And I think it, it made her realize that she can't, like, play everything off. Mm. Or she can't, like, look away from everything just because her goals are being met. She needs to be more aware of what's going on around her. Right. Wonderful. Well, maybe not wonderful, but very interesting. Uh, lastly, yeah. uh, Aaron, how did this campaign change your character and how does it compare to what you were expecting? I would say one of the big things is that there is a great deal that Enoch had that was self-loathing, uh, mainly because like, like he obviously feared the other self in a lot of ways. And when he started, it's just like, I'm being put together in a group where in most circumstances he never really needed a group it was just always him by himself doing things that he would always do and that's the reason why like it 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 was very tough for him to like even get used to you know meeting a bunch of new people like obviously i've I've known you guys for you know months in advance uh, before this campaign but the big problem that came with me is just like what if what if this this person who who obviously has a lot of these problems just like gets dropped into a group because of his reputation why is he so removed out of his element and Sorry about that. oh no that's fine uh but you know that's why he he was a bit of a bit of a shithead. Like he he doesn't know how to talk to people. He doesn't know how to deal with people. He's just he's just a doctor, and so going from like doing things in in doing things along the border and then going to be a doctor and then having to do this whole mission with a whole bunch of people for a particular reason is different. And having people see the worst part of him is 
was like the biggest fear that I can emulate. And then as he grew and he began to understand, you know, not just, you know, his perception of things, but also like other people's plights and uh, and people's perceptions. And then the big breaking point being was mirth. Uh, mirth, obviously, like stepping into Enoch's life and Juliana uh, <laughs> changing everything he possibly knew, like he had to consider that he needed to lie about mirth but he really cared about mirth because like he sees somebody not just only with an inventive mind but somebody who's just like him who a lot of people end up not believing in him in a lot of aspects and it was compounded by mirth leaving with no answers and that hurt so much it began to make him question and become even more volatile to uh, Thamilius in the end. And then towards the end of the campaign where he's lightened up significantly and he's agreeing with party members, he's working with Nathaniel, he's getting used to everybody. And, you know, he he's finally like free of he's finally free of Thamilius in a lot of aspects and that's the reason why you know uh, in the campaign when he mentioned like either I could have let that drown me or I could see this as the fresh new start that I want to have and move forward on and apologize with right. which which was really important and Especially for his end, where he's allowed to go do all the things he wasn't e allowed to do because somebody else was telling him to live his life. You know, I think that that's how I imagine going from a very rough person to somebody who has definitely softened up over over the that time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, the next question for DM uh, is kind of a general one. Like it was mostly directed at uh, Enoch. Uh, but I think it applies yeah. to a majority of the players about how did I go about implementing the different parts of their backstory, specifically like things like Thermilius or the Raven Queen yeah. or uh, Luke and Lancel and things like that. And basically my philosophy is I really like introspection um, and making the characters check on their values and see, you know, do you still hold these values when confronted with them, either in a personified manner or a supernatural manner or just flat out asked by a character, you know? And that's what I tried to do with Enoch of like, I knew that Aaron wanted him to be a good character, but I wanted him to look at, okay, here are other characters that are doing what your character is doing. Would you consider it good then? You know, basically seeing a personification yeah. of that. Uh, here is the extreme version of that by Thermilius just leaving his body and uh, possessing someone else and going to do the ex the logical extreme. Uh, same thing with Luna. I wanted her to confront the possibility that maybe all of her actions might not have been her own and maybe she was influenced. And then, you know, if... Uh, and, like, her belief about stopping and and going to stop and attack and destroy these people who have basically caused her a lot of pain, you know? Like, how does she feel about that after seeing what necromancers are? Luna being basically betrayed and traumatized by this awful person who did awful things in the past, and they are awful. Him trying to redeem himself does not, Luke trying to redeem himself does not change the Isn't fact Renee? that the things, uh, Renee, rather. Uh, yeah. Renee, uh, her dad, trying to redeem himself does not change the fact that what he did was awful and wrong, but how does she confront this person who did those awful wrong things trying to do better, you know? How does she react to that? And I like putting characters in those scenarios. And what I really also like, I'm gonna go on another tangent, is those three characters have a strong attachment to the past compared to Nathaniel, who mostly doesn't care about the past and is mostly looking towards the future. Now, although the three characters are looking towards the future, but it's all kind of rooted in the past, Nathaniel's the only one who's like, no, I'd actually prefer if the past stayed in the past, you know? And I find that a yeah. very interesting parallel and, and kind of uh, 
contrast between Nathaniel and the rest of the characters, how they all have something rooted in the past, uh, all kind of <laughs> daddy issues in a way. <laughs> Sorry, my computer died, but I'm back. Oh, okay. Hey, well, yo. you missed all of that. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> you okay. Watch through the VOD. But, um, I'll watch through the VOD. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have many more questions that were frequently asked for the players. So if you wouldn't mind just me just shotgunning going through the last few that are involving DM stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh so, uh, questions about what happened to Kara and the rest of the characters, and what is uh, Belkinus's future? I'm leaving that up to interpretation. I gave kind of little bits and hints of that. Um, I would say Kara would most likely be more open to diplomacy with uh, Belkinus, considering that uh, there, you know, this entire conspiracy with her sister has been unearthed, and most of her gripes with Belkinus were personal and familial, involving her sister. But now that you know the the other two Maharians are out of the picture, I would I would say that she's most likely more okay with them trying to be diplomatic. Uh, but uh, otherwise, everything, I feel as though you can come to your own conclusions as to what the future of Belkinus will be. Whatever it is, I will say that its change will be slow with the kingdom. Uh, can I ask one for one piece of confirmation? Just because it didn't seem like it was ambiguous, but it, it also like is easy to misinterpret. Oh, yeah, uh, go ahead. When we saw Abigail on the rooftop, that wasn't literally Abigail. That was like her spirit as it was passing on, correct? Uh, if it was not obviously ambiguous, then I'm going to say it here, that that is an ambiguous ending that you can draw your own conclusions to. Understood. Okay. okay. Uh, next what one. thing is there's a sequel. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, next uh, one is what are my plans for the Lustrous Expanse or D&D streams uh, in general in the future? I do want to build more on the Lustrous Expanse. Um, it's proving very daunting and overwhelming to try and think, okay, now this history of this one kingdom exists on this massive continent now, and I got to think about how that affects the other kingdoms or how it doesn't and why and all that stuff. I do want to build upon the lustrous expanse, but I want to start small and uh, separated. So I don't want things to have to tie in too much, not only for the players to not have to know all that much about Balkanus, uh, but also for myself in terms of writing uh and i do plan on doing more dnd streams in the future i think this dipping my toe into dnd streams has definitely uh been made it a lot more accessible to me and made me like feel that it's not all that scary anymore um but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do things i think this is the the maximum length that i would want to do though i don't do long sprawling campaigns and i can't let alone ones that are streamed so um <laughs> oh yeah yeah I, oh. I I I think I want to keep it about this small, uh, maybe a few sessions longer, but no more than thirty. I like this size, um, and I look forward to more of those in the future. And I look mo forward to sharing more about the lustrous expanse in the future as well. Uh, yeah, and I hope you guys look forward to that. And uh, yeah, those are the frequently asked general questions, and I think we can move on to picking questions from the chat. Any things that pique your interest uh any of the players um okay and yeah so chat if you have any particular questions for the players or me oh feel God. free to first ask one, oh God. God. the first one i see is our favorite fight okay we'll yeah, go on let's say. okay well, let's do all right favorite fight then uh we'll go down the yeah. list starting with davy i see that one uh favorite fight um i will say despite the fact that this wasn't like one of the times that Nathaniel just stepped in and cleared house. I really loved, as we were trying to get into Vertheim, all the thorns showing up, all of the NPCs arriving to help us, because it very much felt like the, the reward that we got for interacting with these NPCs. Mm -hmm. Like, we had made relationships with these people, and those relationships had been positive to the point that they were willing to put their lives on the line just for us to go get us get ourselves into even more danger uh and the the moment with lancel especially so that's that's a very uh, personal connection yeah, where he like... looks back and he says it's like you said witch taker i inherit your enemies beautiful everything well, about that entire interaction was fantastic 
Oh, uh-huh. thanks. I'm I'm happy about that. And I've definitely been influenced by 14 to do that because 14 does that all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. I'm gonna steal it. Um, <laughs> I considering I just got to a certain part in 14. Yeah, you just that, experienced it, that, Aaron. Yeah, dude, it's the best feeling ever. Just going in and fucking shit yeah. up. Anyway, before we go, move on to the yeah, next, yeah, yeah. Uh, not question, but next person. If you guys, the players here, uh, see a question that you like, uh, write it down so that you don't forget, and oh, then you so can. Many. Uh, yeah, we're getting a lot. So if you see a question that you like, write it down so you don't forget. Oh, Lord. Um, next, Shelby. What was your favorite fight? Oh, uh, I have to say, I think from Luna's pers- like from Luna as a character development perspective, the Kara Maharian fight because that was the only fight in the entirety of Belkin's Necker Hunt where I only made one attack and it was to the bone golem to keep it from charging someone. I did not. I actively was throwing my weapons on the ground. Um, and I think that's the first time I've played Luna not trying to get up into somebody's face and wreck their house. <laughs> um, I thought it was a really cool moment for Luna's development and how she saw necromancy, especially seeing that she was it was a fucking priest of the Raven Queen in front of her right now. Mm-hmm. So uh, that one and the mechanic of that one was really cool. I love that we could talk our way out. I love alternative routes to fighting in D&D. Um, and that one, it felt so rewarding when we finally got her to listen to us. And it was so tense. And you did such a good job with that entire scene of having her, you know, her, her you dare speech. Like, it, that you are not welcome here it gave me chills. It was so good. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, Cammy, favorite fight? Um, That one was also one of my favorites. Uh, Sorry, Cammy. Reasons. Um, No, 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 you're fine. Listen. I, I shake your hand. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, absolutely. That was that was one of my all time favorites. And I guess the other one, um, would be the fight with Bloodstride at the end because it ended up being not what we were supposed to do in the sense of we were trying, like we were tricked, so to say, in that one moment of we got to kill Bloodstride, but it turned out we didn't have to kill Bloodstride. Turned out we had to get rid of all the other stuff first. Um, and then we had to like reprioritize our brains and it like got down to the wire. Like that was great. Um, yeah. Nathaniel yeah. coming in clutch. Nathaniel coming in clutch. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. You finish. Um, just a, a little thing on the other fight um, with Kara. I liked that Renee got to use her thoughts to actually get into Kara's mind and like talk her, talk her down, as well as being right up in her face. I like that Renee being the squishy bean was getting up in people's faces. <laughs> I was like, good. <laughs> Gave and, me so much anxiety. And Aaron, hey, what was your- Hey, you know how I feel all the time when I play with you. <laughs> Aaron, what was your favorite fight? Oh, it- this is not a cop out to me. I think the final fight was the best friggin' fight because room to fly. Everyone had a strategy. Everyone was trying to. Uh, everyone was trying to deal with everything in their own way. And then, like right at the moment where it's just like, it's not even like beating on the giant dragon. It's like Nathaniel taking the lead and saying, you know, it, it, like you have to prioritize. You know. Uh, like Enoch prioritize the archers. Uh, Renee prioritize uh, dealing with uh, with crowds. some crowds with, the, with crowds. Uh, yeah. Luna, you go up and you run. You run up and you hit the big boy, and then Nathaniel all the way in the back. Mantle of inspiration. <laughs> uh, with, uh, Did you I, use every mantle of inspiration that fight? Oh, absolutely. Every single nice. one. Uh, <laughs> honestly, that, that kind of speech where I like told everybody what to do was uh, after re-watching the Bloodstride fight and totally botching up like how to utilize everybody's abilities, when I got the second chance fighting Kara, I grabbed it immediately. That's what I'm yeah. so happy about that I'm proud of you guys is because that fight was basically Bloodstride Part 2. I wanted to see, okay, Did I'm just... Learn? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put basically the same things... Like, I'm going to put a bunch of archers, I'm going to have some wraiths summon, you know, adds, essentially, and I'm going to see if you have, are going to execute your your strategy that you finally came to towards the end of that fight, except sooner. And you did, and I'm very proud of you for that. Yeah. Very good. 
I, I, so I also love the moment of saying, don't let up for a second. I will. That's how I always will see like a big end fight. Don't let up for a second. Mm -hmm. Don't give them a don't give them an inch of ground. Just keep going. Uh, I love little stuff like that. Yeah, because like the, the blood stride fight, you guys almost lost. You were very close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so close. But that fight was so good. That was honestly very, very good fight. Uh, somebody's question was, uh, d for Davi, what does Mantle of Inspiration do? I don't know, man. It's going to be a mystery forever. Uh, yeah. that, uh, that is left to your interpretation. <laughs> I, I got one question. Does Enoch's arm have any modification or is planned? Uh, I originally wanted to put one of those uh, wrist gun uh, builds because uh, for, the, for the gunslinger, you get like a choice of what guns you want to do. And there's one that's small enough to like put on your wrist. I would have just put that in the hand and like I pop that out whenever it's like the last possible second, my last resort, my sneak attack. Uh, but that was mm -hmm. like never got around to it. <laughs> uh, someone asked me if I would make a Balkanus Necro Hunt campaign book, and I would love to do that. I just know that it takes a lot of time. So if I ever yeah. did, I would have to set aside all videos and streams to work on it for well not all of them but definitely slow them down to work on it and that me making this campaign was kind of my kind of foot in the door to the possibility of that because me i knew that if i ran this campaign publicly i would never really be able to run it for anyone again unless they just never watched any D D or or anything like that because it's out there now people know what happens um yeah I feel like you could make a pretty cool, um, like, like a, just a, like a setting guide, like the, uh, yeah. like the original, like the original Taldere guide. I could yeah. do that. Yeah. Just like a setting. Yeah. That could yeah, be fun. Yeah. Where it's just a bunch of mini adventures that you write into the setting. I think if um, you're going to do that, you're going to need to write a few more, uh, adventures and streams. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Like, it yeah. would be a lustrous expanse setting. <laughs> lustrous <laughs> expansion. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, See, I already got the name. Uh, I already got the name. Uh, I, I, I'd imagine um, because like all of us are are relatively good writers, we I would imagine that we would all have a, a good amount of input for how things would be. I'm not a writer. Uh, I'm not a writer. I just well, tell stupid stories. Anubis <laughs> asked, uh, "What are some NPCs you wanted to spend more time with?" I think we answered that earlier with like if we didn't have a time limit. Um, yeah. But mm -hmm. I guess uh, if we were to go like quickly more specifically one npc that you wish you spent more time with uh davy uh uh, 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 uh sorry i was in the middle of asked, answering a question in the chat oh, okay. um uh one npc that i wish i spent more time with i think i answered this already kind of like, yeah we did kind uh, of I, even though like uh, that i personally wish my character could have spent more time with i mean any more amount of time with lancel would have been good mm. uh Nanette would have been good, like, overall for the story. I think that would have been a better choice. But if you're, like, asking who I could interact with, it would be Lancel. Because Kara was a perfect person to bounce off of, but we had plenty of times to do that. Uh, Lancel, I think I talked to him as much as what was necessary for the story, but I also don't have anybody else to pick because I think that about all of the characters I interacted <laughs> with. Uh, uh, cool. Oh, if I can say one thing about Lancel, because people always ask it, and I just, it's a really quick question to answer uh lancel is adopted uh nathaniel did not fuck a dragon mm -hmm. he just adopted a kid <laughs> nathaniel uh, i don't think nathaniel <laughs> fucks like nathaniel does uh, not seem like a character yeah. who fucks. He, he strikes me as like the I most like the great ace man i think i've ever met yeah <laughs> he's absolutely arrow ace he yeah. does not like uh, there was a point where I was considering giving him a small story about how, and I did, like I wrote it out as a potential thing if somebody ever asked about relationships. Uh, it, basically, the story would have been like, there was one time where some guy, when he was really young, like got infatuated with him, but then Nathaniel took him off on a, like, on a mission, not back before he was a witch taker, and the other guy saw like the result of a gruesome bloody murder got freaked out also not just by the murder but by nathaniel's complete ambivalence towards it <laughs> and just fucked off and that would have been the, like the closest thing nathaniel ever got to a relationship and he truly is not bothered by that yeah i, I think there's actually a scene whenever you, uh nathaniel was in the very fancy hotel like tavern and like there was one um kind of uh let's say serviceman 
that like winked at him and then nathaniel was like hmm gross and then just like walked away <laughs> Uh, the fishing. I don't remember, but that sounds like something that he would have said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Shelby, one uh, maybe an NPC that you would have liked more time with, um, specifically. Creighton. 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 The tea, our, our, the tea boy. Oh the, the, yeah, the misled the, kind of like, ha ha! I got a big friend who's gonna go kill the necromancers. No, 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 no. Tea, the, the tea boy, the one that uh, Sage Animal sent me to to uh, her oh, apprentice. Oh yes, yes. He was made I... kind of almost specifically for like Luna, but like mo more so the party, just to kind of talk about like what is the nature of like living for yourself versus doing the greater good. Well, because that's Creighton had did he did make Luna question that, and that's like what ultimately made Luna be like, you know, you're right. Actually, you should live for yourself. You should do what you find happy. What you find makes you happy. And if that's selling tea, then I'd like mm -hmm. to buy some tea from you. Um, I I don't know. I thought that that interaction it was so small, but it was so meaningful to me as like a player. I would have oh, loved to see more. Yeah, and I want to clear one thing up that I, I don't think I'd explained it very well as to why he would decline, like, uh, Luna asking for help. It's because he hasn't, you know, he... I probably sh could have done a better job explaining this, but he had an oath that he would not help anyone unless he just felt like it. Because if he does help someone who is in need, well then, okay, then he's going to have to help the next person and the next person and the next person. I right? think that was perfectly well articulated. I kind of, okay. I figured out why, I, I understood exactly why he was like, um, no, I, I can't do this. I, like, I, I, it was a principle. It was, it wasn't like he was incapable. I totally understood it, and Luna understood. It's why she didn't press. Right. Yeah. I like making those yeah. questions, uh, in the form of NPCs you, and quests. You're doing, you're really good at that. I won't say it because I don't want anything spoiled in future stuff, but the one interaction we had in our test campaign at the very end, I've noticed that you like to challenge our morality a lot, mm -hmm. and it was interesting mm -hmm. seeing how everybody, yeah. how differently we all interacted with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cammy, a character you would have liked more time with. Um, this is gonna sound random. Um, no, actually, no. I think that was actually really well put together. I, I, icing on the cake. I actually would have loved to have more interaction with the dad. Mm, like Luke? near the end yeah, Luke just cause finding that shit out near the end her saying like I didn't care wasn't necessarily her forgiving him it was just like I am done holding on to my grief for you mm. like I, I'm done holding on to this pain that you caused me I don't want to feel it anymore I already have so much other stuff that now is like prioritizing above that so you are no longer my problem yeah, she's letting go of the past. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, I think I have a feeling which character you would like to spend more time with. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Juliana. Juliana, yeah. Know. Juliana was very fun to play. I, I, I just, because, like, in my brain, like, like, especially from Enoch's perception, there is... There is that bit where it's just like Enoch is so like so like unable to comprehend his own existence in a certain light. Like I, I, it's weird to say it that way. Um, he has been controlled and told what to do for the longest fucking time, and that has been a persistent problem. And now that that isn't the case especially with like juliana who is just like she's taken hold of her destiny and he wants to understand that whole aspect and that's why one of the big things that the reason why he loves her is just like he he likes that in in somebody's uh purview it's just like there isn't a question on on what they have decided for themselves mm -hmm. and Enoch wants to know what that's really about and how to live like that. And now he does. And now he gets to spend time, you know, with that person to connect those dots and eventually come to the conclusion that Enoch 
will eventually like will eventually settle into understanding his own person mm -hmm. uh all, albeit half of his life was basically robbed to do things that were never really up to him in that way but he gets to spend the rest of his extended life being an awesome uh just dis discovering himself that's good yeah uh cammy shelby were there any questions that you may have noticed that might have passed by that you thought might be interesting? Uh, honestly the chat's moving too fast yeah and it I'm is just a little bit. I, I, know I, saw <laughs> I caught one. one. Oh. oh, you caught one I caught one. Uh, to everyone but Shelby, sorry. Oh. Uh, what Fine. sorts of gifts would your characters get Luna and Scorpio for their weapon for oh. their weddings? Oh dear God! Oh. You, were oh, invited. You, you absolutely oh, were all invited. invited. It just yeah. wasn't. A, I need to say now it wasn't any sort of a fancy affair. Yeah, it was right. probably. Yeah. I, I guarantee you. Well, like I guarantee yeah. you, these two just pitched a tent like out in the middle of nowhere and was like, "Yes, we're getting married. We got a priest. Let's go." Yeah. You know, Renee. <laughs> Am I the priest? <laughs> Renee, you know what Renee would have done? You, her gift to you, you'd be like, oh, yeah, it's not a big thing. Just like, we're going to meet up at the woods at this time. And Renee would be like, bet. And go put up like all the streamers in like a little archway. Like, Aww. make sure that everything was set up all nice and pretty. That would be her gift. Because it's like, nah, ain't no way you having a simple wedding while I'm around. <laughs> like, uh-uh. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like a lot of extra stuff because she knows that like, that I would probably freak gets, them both out. I think Renee like, gets Linda style. You know? Yeah, like something very simple, like some very decorative, like candles in like particular spots. Aww. Like, uh, if she knew somebody who knew the cantrip lights, she would like get them to cast that like on the trees, like in the little walkway up leading up to it. Aww. Like, put some flowers over the arch, just little things. <laughs> That's so cute. That's so sweet. I need to draw this now. We're, we're making this all about. We're making this all about Shelby. <laughs> eh. Nathaniel, I, I, I Davi, what would Nathaniel get, Luna? Uh, so at this point in the story, Nathaniel would most likely be very busy with what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, so he might not be able to make an appearance, but if he isn't, he still would make sure that a gift was sent to you, and Aww. it would be a nice little present with a yellow like uh bow tie or not bow tie but like you know what i mean like the bow on it a yellow bow, you, yellow bow yeah on you open it up yeah. and inside is a rock <laughs> you, you know you, what you pick up the rock underneath are two drawn on eyes <laughs> Look, you're making a family, now your rock can have a family too. Oh my god, yes. I need to find two tiny rocks now. One yes, you do. My sons. <laughs> Oh. That'd be cute, because then you could get, like, a wizard or something to put, like, a little spell on those, and they could become your sending stones. Oh, my God. The family. <laughs> Just get, like, a group call for... Well, and she would... Fucking Luna would, too. I mm -hmm. want the mama bear. <laughs> I love for that. Scorpio, he, for Scorpio, he would have gotten gauze. <laughs> wow. You're gonna need it after tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Everybody Ooh. thinks Luna and Scorpio are way more intense than they are. They still are like are fighty, but I don't see them as that way. I see them as honestly cuddly? like. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, well, no, it's only canon. They, I'm just saying this now, guys. They only had sex once during the campaign. Every other time, they were just cuddling and enjoying Aww. being in each other's Aww. company. Luna's each a other huge up, monster hunters. <laughs> Luna is a Luna's like a huge like snuggle bug, all right? She just wants you know like what? Honestly, that makes a lot of sense. You would spend you know, spending all day fighting monsters and getting sweaty. You just want to lay down. You don't want to like wrestle yeah, another yeah, monster lie. in bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have a nice just, time. I mean, when you live in the cold, the best thing you can do is snuggle, right? Yeah, yeah no, like seriously, you've seen the environment they live well, yeah, in. Yeah, that's right? true. They live in the mountains. Oh, I forget about that. <laughs> Oh, uh, what would what would Enoch get, Luna and Scorpio? Oh, what wouldn't he get? <laughs> That's oh the God. question. What he would, so, have, like, what he can't afford, I would imagine. Uh, well, first off, a lot of things he would have done is uh, immediately handmade. So he would have started. Uh, he would have started planning on like getting, like, uh, Scorpio and Luna like a brooch and and a uh, and a little, uh, some like some jewelry that would have gone well with the outfits that they were going to choose for the wedding so that would have been gift one gift two was obviously to hopefully arrive as the priest uh and like do the whole song and dance uh excluding Arethus being uh 
you know, being that whole aspect, but more I, just like I feel like they man. would just have someone that can cast ceremony, just like out of mechanic terms, just have somebody who yeah. has the the spell ceremony. Because neither Luna or Scorpio are super religious people. I feel like okay. theirs would be a celebration of union yeah. rather than. A god brought us together. It's like, no, let's yeah. just uh, fuck it. Like, I'm marrying that, this man. Let's get drunk. Bards, yeah. Wait, can bards learn ceremony? Uh, I think ceremony's a cleric spell. No, so, yes, bards, bards can learn candy. every spell. Yes! Oh my god, so Renee can actually officiate the wedding. It, um, yeah, it, like I like I said, like it really included all the gall. Oh, all the Paladin. Gods Damn it! No, no, no! Magical secrets. Yeah. Magical secrets yeah. allows a bard yeah, to know any spell. Yeah. <gasps> a bard can learn yeah, literally any oh. spell in the game. Yeah. Hey, once so they hit level ten, that's the gift. Renee will officiate your wedding. <laughs> we, 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 we she were just one sets level everything away. up. She's your maid of honor, and she's also officiating. But uh, but yeah, it would have been like uh, to like construct everything handmade. Uh, Aww. but also subsequently, the last gift would have been in assumption that you guys were going to end up having kids because I imagine that you know Luna, happen. fucking Luna's going to have kids. That woman, yeah. So he would have built, uh, he would have built a bunch of like toys and, uh, and like one of those little rocking horses as oh. well as like, as well as like dull swords, like dull wooden swords and stuff, because he can expect that these kids are going to grow up with fighting parents. They're going to have to learn as well. Oh no, and... Luna's sons are two little forces of nature. That's yeah. just a thing. Oh yeah, no. He would have uh, he, he would have uh, created small little magical toys as well. Ooh, I'm uh, gonna I'm gonna piggyback yeah. off of this. Would Luna invite Mirth? Luna, yeah, oh. of course. Mirth would absolutely oh, would... Uh, Mirth would absolutely help Enoch. I, I think. Oh, definitely. Aww. Fucking Luna would have sent like, an invitation. Luna neck. would have sent an invitation probably out to Kara if if Kara would have attended. Not saying that she would have, <laughs> but an, 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 an invitation would have found its way into Cloveway. Purely because Kara was pivotal in changing a very important, yeah. Mirth, like a very hard. Yeah. I think Mirth would attend Kara. I don't think I don't I know. I wouldn't expect her to. It's more like a, it's a gesture it's a, of yeah, like, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, I hope you're okay. It would have probably come with like a letter of wishing her well, and also, hey, I'm getting married, and if you'd like to come, well, this. By the way, you know what? That, that would that would be good because Kara's the the exact kind of person that would be like, oh, you, no one ever comes to visit just because they want to hang out. It always has to be, oh, Kara, I need to help with this necromancy or this magic, and now she can't say that to you because you invited yeah. her to your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Carl would say that once and Renee would visit literally like once a month to get drunk. Oh, <laughs> like just shoot the shit. Like also, that would yeah. be the deal. If, if immediately if she's like, oh, you just want something out of me? And Renee immediately would be like, no, I do not. <laughs> like <laughs> never no, again. I brought you wine. I, I brought you wine, bitch. And then can I uh mm -hmm. can I throw out just a, a small little uh, a small little idea for the children that I, I... So, like, they're being raised by Luna and Scorpio. You'd imagine them to be gr gr grifty warriors. But what if they both turned out to be, like, very, like, soft healers <laughs> because their parents keep getting hurt? <laughs> it's just like, well, parents heal. I'm, I'm working on the portraits of them now. It'll probably be done by this week at, weekend. But I actually have where both of her kids went. Um, Yay! Both, um, one of her sons went on to continue in the Raven's Calling. Um... As he, just fucking as reckless as his parents. Um, yeah. And one of them actually kind of became more of an inquisitive rogue type. And me and Cammy have worked out they joined the Witch Takers. Oh. So that's he basically gets to Leo. Renee's win, wing, primarily because it's like, she, like looking at the little resume, they're like, oh, uh, Renee, you probably need to see this. She like picks it up. No, this one's coming under my, like, this one is immediately under my hand. Like, they're not leaving my sight. Like, and the, like, the under his person's like, why? And she goes, because I know their mother and they would kill me if anything happened to them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right I would. Not really, but because it's you. One, one thing I want to say course. before it slips my mind, uh, I will, unfortunately, just getting this out right now uh, so I don't disappoint someone, uh, people in the future, I will say that in the future, I think I will be retconning at least the names and the bullet points of philosophy around the different religions and pantheons in Belkinus, just to be independent from D and D. Uh, I will yeah. use D and D monsters and creatures and stuff like that. But as far as you know, things like Erethus and stuff like that, I don't know them well enough to feel like I 
and also just like the lustrous expanse is a is an original setting so i kind of want to come up with like original pantheons that i know you know have more a, a little bit more control over and can control how the world works in that sense so i mm-hmm. do apologize to aaron and and shelby and oh, anyone no. who has no, invested I, um, in like raven actually, queen and Aerithus stuff that i will adjust them slightly to better suit the setting and be more original <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. it's funny because your interpretation of the Raven Queen is actually really different from the interpretation I always knew. Mm-hmm. Um, so I liked it because, like, one of the things about the Raven Queen in I think I think she's a Faerun and then got swiped up by like snatched up by Matt Mercer for more lore. Um, she uh, she originally she was like an elf that like wandered into the shadow like that was from the Shadowfell and she became like the fucking ruler of it. No one's ever seen her face. I really like the the way that you put her that she wanted to un- she wanted to develop and empathize with the humans that she was shepherding rather than she's just an om- like an omnipresent force and she's mm-hmm. just always there and her um her only thing is all things must die. I like that she had like loopholes about necromancy and she could see where the there was good uses in it and as long as souls were not being attempted to be taken from her shepherd from her flock. It's, I, I like that. I think that you did a really good job with that. And honestly, just a name change. I feel like you could present that as your own without um, any conflict. Right, yeah, right, right. it reminds yeah. me of that one poem, and I don't remember who wrote it. And it's like on the tip of my tongue of who the author is. But it's like that poem of because they could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. But it's mm-hmm. like she's just kind of she's she's there to, to guide you where you got to go next. She's yeah. not there to, to give you any ill will. She's not there to like just be there. She's kind of like. Hey, buddy, like, stop yeah. I do very vague, I like, uh, Tales of the Three Brothers pr- yeah. vibes from Harry yeah. Potter. Yeah. yeah. I, I, as someone that had, uh, used the gods dramatically in their last campaign, uh, like, I fully understand in, like, wanting to make sure that it, it, it's more antiquated with, you know, your homebrew world. I did the same thing with the Raven Queen in my campaign, where it's just, like, I took a lot of the main notes of the Raven Queen, but instead of it being somebody that had ascended to godhood, this was, this was already somebody that had uh, the potential to be a god and was a god along with all the other gods rising to their, uh, to their posts. Mm-hmm. So, like, definitely changing those aspects is really good for any campaign. It's just, like, really setting it into its own world. Yeah. I think I want to, yeah, I I think my personal image of what I want gods to be in the Lustrous Expanse is I want to keep them very mysterious. I don't, I want to have a few, maybe, like, one or two that have ascended, but I, I want them to be very, you know, they're not mortals. They're on a different plane of existence and are maybe curious about the mortals or maybe they don't think about the mortals maybe the mortals are not of none of their concern you know like i want them to be godly and like have their own agenda sometimes maybe they don't even show up to the mortals that call them you know i want them to be kind of that and uh yeah, someone's asking what will Kara's wedding look like. Kara's already married. She she already has a spouse, and if she wasn't, you know, she would not invite anyone from Belkis to 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 attend. <laughs> I, I will I, let I don't you know. know now. Kara seems to me like the type that would probably go. Like, I don't know. She's she seems like just because she's so reserved. I don't think she would have. I, maybe this is just me speculating. She seems like the type that would have had a really. A, a wedding it feels like she would have, she would have like had a private yeah, so ceremony we're, 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 with jackson oh, maybe but yeah. Yeah. For, for she just seems like such an she seems like such a, like a private person and she something like that is like a really sweet and intimate thing between a couple and she it seems like that would be something she just want between her and oh her my wife. god i got it I gotta really show I gotta show you guys the different comics that Kate drew of Jacqueline and Kara because Jacqueline's very much <laughs> like like Jacqueline's very much like the the like sweet but also kind of demanding of Kara and Kara is like all big and nasty and scary but Jacqueline's the only one that can like scare her. It's like you better not you better not make the carpets dirty and and Kara's like yes dear. Yeah, yeah. they're also between... the comic where like she was hanging like the hangers onto her bone arm. Yeah. I think I remember seeing Kate post that on Twitter. Uh, it, it, it's like the the grand total difference of being you know uh, pastel and gothic pastel. Yeah, yeah. It's like the flower versus the skull is their relationship. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so. you know what? What was that really cheesy line? Uh, I'm, I'm. You're sharp like a thorn, or uh, I'm sharp like a thorn, and you're soft like a petal. Together we make a rose. Oh, Aww. that's pleasant. Oh, I've nice. never heard that before. I, 
I stole that from Midnight Gospel. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Very nice. Oh God, that's a that's a oh, show. I like that's a show. Like that being oh like God, it's Hades and but less. <laughs> oh, I love that show so much. Oh, no, I I I remember that last episode so much. It it made it broke. I can't crying. watch it. it, got, it got I can't me, watch it a second time. It, it got yeah. me calling my own mom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, before I forget, while I'm on the topic of sharing images, I'm currently scrolling to try and find the ones that Kate shared with me. But in the meantime, uh, Cami, would you mind if I shared uh, the thing that you made? And then I will Jared. share the thing that Davi, that you have planned Jared. as well, if that's okay. I'm, right. I'm sorry, okay. what? Oh. What is happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh. So Cami drew this as a sort of epilogue for, uh, let me try and find it. Where is it? Where did I save it? Gosh. Where is it? Dang. Where, where is, is it? it? What is it? Where, where is, is it? it? You can, uh, if you would like, you can give your thoughts on it, Cami, while I'm trying to find it. Um, well, since we did say that Renee was taking up the, the witch takers, um, initially she would wear, like, she'd put on the yellow coat once and then go, absolutely not. Like, <laughs> not wearing that coat. Uh-uh. Like, no chance in hell. Not I doing really that. I really like the idea that you just put it on once. You both <laughs> looked at each other, dot, 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 at the same time. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, both of them immediately like, uh, no, this is not the color so she went and actually got it um dyed to the purple color and then also glitterified it probably much to nathaniel's horror uh you there we go there it is you can see it on the screen right now it is very big there it is drawn by yeah. cammy there she is the witch taker also can i just point out that cammy lined and colored that in like the hour and a half we've yeah. been live that's yeah, that was pretty impressive, impressive. Yeah. There, i already had it sketched still still you lined and colored that in an hour, almost two hours <laughs> i thought <laughs> i drew fast loosely lined with with the with the pencil tool with the darker pencil tool and then i just colored i Again, <laughs> this does not change that that was very fast very and I am impressed. impressed. Take my compliment, damn it. All right, and uh, Davi, this is a thing that you have uh, in the works. Yeah, you're okay with sharing? Yes. All right. Uh, so this is not a finished product, very obviously, but uh, oh! this is the big... This is a, a small little piece of what I'm going to be releasing this Saturday. <gasps> oh my god, the ear! It's a uh, Oh my god, absolution's broken. Her, her ah, and the hat. Ah. <laughs> for something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for something. It, you'll see it this Saturday on my channel. Yay! Soon. Very oh soon. my god. Okay. Oh, I love it. I got to say I am so happy. It, it brings me so much joy that you guys are so invested that you're willing to do something for it that you would put on your YouTube channel. That is mm, that Hell warms yeah. my heart oh. a lot. It's like, wow, well, you like it that much? Well, oh, I, speaking <laughs> of, <laughs> sorry, I just want to say you, you were talking about absolution, absolution being broken. I, th I can't draw for anything. Uh, the person who did draw it drew like all of the stuff on the first table first, and then the last session happened, and I had to message them and be like, "Hey, you have to break the sword." <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That was like a spur of the moment thing, and I oh, saw great. people were like really confused afterwards. But yeah, absolution's broken, guys. Luna yeah. snapped it. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I was, was just—I just had to message him and be like, "Hey, that sword, can you break it for me?" Break it in half. Thank you. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. What? Great. Anyway, sorry. I'm, I'm glad I, that you didn't use the other thing that I told you was going to be recognizable. Uh, I, I kept the—I kept the earrings. I just put a scarf there as well, so that it would be more recognizable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what I'm saying is like when you asked me the question originally, you were like, "What is the, your most noticeable trait?" And I was like, "Can I say her eyes?" Like, yeah, I saw that. And I'm like, I'm not putting your eyes on this table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, here's yeah, the yeah. one that I found. Uh, I think Kate put a lot of them on Twitter, but here's one of Jacqueline and Kara. Uh, Jacqueline scolding Kara for doing combat on the front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just fucking love oh how God, Kate draws expressions. <laughs> Kate has such an expressive such art Google style, and I Google love it. Energy, I love it. Kara. Oh, Kara just had the best tired lesbian energy, and I was yeah. so here for it. Every moment she was on screen, I was like, yes, I love her. We saw her coming up the path, and she was like, go away, children, and then she raised their cat anyway. I was like, I, I like this chick. I don't want to fight her. Yeah, that oh, all of Kate's art has been fantastic this entire 
like campaign. I've linked I've linked her Twitter in the chat fantastic. if anyone wishes to give her a lot of love, which she deserves. Yeah. All of the artists have been fantastic this entire campaign. Mm -hmm. Like NPC art, thank you, Joe. And uh thank you, Shelby. Um, the like background art. Remind me who drew the background art for some of the Oh, Angel. Angel. Yes. 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 The beautiful backgrounds and backdrops. Like the painterly look of them. Actually, if we do exclamation point and then art. Kate's, like, there we go. Animatic stuff, like for the art yes. pieces. I was like, give, give, give. Yes, more. <laughs> like every good. time you started like moving us to a different thing, I was like, art, 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 art. <laughs> like, give I it turned, to me. Uh, I, I turned Cloveway and then Belkinus proper into my uh, desktop backgrounds. Good. Yes, mm -hmm. they're good. Mm -hmm. Angel, thank you. Thank you, uh, Callie, our wonderful Callie, who brought the characters to life with our portraits. Thank you so much, Callie. Thank you, Kate. And then Kate. did you guys see the, the picture Callie drew for our last long rest? It was yes. so great. Yes. I had, like, oh, I had, like oh, yeah. tears. <laughs> I love it. I loved everything. It yeah, in case, so good. in case anybody didn't see it, I'm going to try and find it real quick. <laughs> they all look like shit, close. right? <laughs> Uh, so I, I I wanted to mention uh, I I'm not much of an artist uh, you know can't draw I don't do a lot of singing uh, but one of the big things that I I wanted to mention was like talking about oh look at that yeah there it is that's uh, so the final long rest that Callie drew for ev for everyone. <laughs> And it's so oh, beautiful because she's the one that drew the official portraits for all of our characters. Yeah. So yeah. Like yeah. Somehow it just feels yes. canonical. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I feel bad for any artist that has to draw Enoch's arm. <laughs> yeah, there oh, we go. God. It's just so cute. I, I, I still love the concept of like Enoch could just take off his arm and throw it at somebody. <laughs> Honestly, you, sad we didn't or get just to go, that. I challenge you to yeah. a duel, and instead of smacking them, you just look, like launch your arm yeah. and then smack them with the hand. It's just that scene. I am surprised she never made a disarming arm. joke. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, it's just it's just I that scene from Toy Story where Woody's like, Buzz, yeah. give me an arm, give me a hand. It's like Shut he up. throws it. Yeah. Oh, we're running out of time. Yeah. Oh yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, uh, we are. Well, we still got like thirty minutes because um, I oh shit, yes, you're right. We are running out of time. Ah shit. Uh, so yes. Uh, let's wrap it up. Is there anything you guys wish to uh, give announcement of any final things that uh, you wish to say? Starting, we'll thank start with so initiative order. The campaign, Joe. Aw, thank you. Yeah. Davi, anything, any last words before I kill you? Oh. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> no. Please oh. don't. Okay. Uh, I have a family. <laughs> you seem really broken up about it. I. What about Blizzard, Davi? <laughs> Uh, he'll live on without me, assuredly. <laughs> <You'll not? laughs> he's, an he's an independent cat. Uh, Shelby. Uh, oh, sorry, you weren't finished. No, that. Sorry, no, that'll be it. Okay, okay, sorry. I was just, I just realized that it's like thirty minutes out. Uh, Shelby, yeah. Uh, all right. Is this like? I'm so sorry. Is this just the goodbyes? Yeah. Sorry, final, like... final word. Any any last things you want to say to the chat? Uh, thank you for all the love you guys gave. Uh, Luna, this I've been playing live for a little over a year and a half now, and this has been, I think, the most engaging audience I've ever seen. Not that I do not love my my people over on Roll for Damage. If you like how I play, you can go check me out over there. Yes. Um, but this has been it's it's been kind of unreal the amount of people who are just as invested in Luna's plot as I was, and um, and everybody else's plots. I'm. It was really cool. It was really awesome, Sue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an experience I'm going to treasure for the rest of my absolutely. life. Absolutely. It was very fun to write for all of your characters. Uh, Cammy, mm -hmm. any last words? Thank you for running the campaign, Joe. Well, thank you for thank playing you. in it. Thank you, everybody, for playing in the campaign. It was really fun to interact with everybody's characters. Oh, yeah. you Cammy. Yeah. It was you great to the... get to play more with you. Yeah, no, it's been really I... fun. This is um, one of the one of the stream campaigns I've had a lot of like fun in. Um, I don't I don't do a lot of stream campaigns. I have I don't have a lot of time to play campaigns in general. So I was glad I had the time to like come in and do this. Um, thank you to the music, uh, the musicians who helped like build all the cool compositions and stuff. To the artists for all of the cool stuff. For all the fan artists who made like really funny little pieces. And to the audience in general, just yeah, big thanks all around. Aaron, final word. Thank you all 
so very much for everything. Mm -hmm. I uh, this is my first true real campaign experience. Oh yeah, that's right. You've been a forever DM. How was your first campaign, yeah. Aaron? This is unlike anything I have ever experienced, um, and I will never ever forget it. Uh, case you might not know, yes, I am a forever DM. I've been running uh, D6. I'm currently on my fourth campaign uh, of D6, uh, Black Archives. And I hope to have each and every one of you on <laughs> as as guests in the future. Hopefully near, maybe? We'll see. But yeah, this is, this is my... This is this is my first real uh, campaign, and I'm I'm glad it, it it came to a very happy conclusion. Yes, but yeah, uh, I also thank you everybody for joining me in my first streamed campaign. This was a first for me Yay. as well, and it really means a lot. Um, yeah, everyone coming to watch and all my players, thank you for being wonderful, wonderful players. I couldn't ask for better ones, and really <laughs> making this you know this setting that I've had in my brain in this campaign into the definitive version of it for me in my brain like this this is this is the balconist necro hunt now like mm -hmm. and yeah. i thank you all and yeah uh yeah thank you. you 